Hey everybody, I am literally speedrunning video creation because I want to upload this video in 14 minutes and I'm gonna do it. I'm determined. Okay, so in this video, let's try an experiment that I got suggested in one of the um, last videos. And what are we gonna try? Well, instead of keeping state, so for example, we're clicking a button, then updating state, we want to keep that inside of a database instead of state. Right? That sounds confusing at first, but it is possible with a package called trpc, which we're going to use for this, which, which abstracts away the state into a hook, and whenever the result is there from the database um, query that we do, or mutation in this case, we get back the data on the front end and can then display it. So we are using real-time state, you could say. Sounds maybe a bit confusing at first, but you'll um, understand what I mean in this video. Um, let's try it out. I think this is a very cool experiment, and I was actually uh, quite surprised at the results. So let's dive right into it. All right, so let's get started. And to get started, we're going to go to the desktop and then type in npx. Um, let's do it with create t3 app at latest. Um, and the reason I'm doing that is, oh, what will your project be called? Let's call it stateless. Yes, we'll be using TypeScript. We want Prisma, Tailwind, and TRPC. We don't want a new repo, and now we want to use Yarn. There we go. That's going to create our folder, and we're going to go into that and then run Yarn to install all the necessary dependencies. And while we are doing that, we can create our database. Let's just call this uh, stateless. There we go. We want to create this in Frankfurt and create database. And we want to get the connection string already. Um, I'm not going to you know, blur any of this so you can follow along easier. If you're even following along, you can just uh, watch me try this out, I guess. Um, and then we will paste that into the env file. Um, mm -mm, there we go paste the connection string in here and we can close that and it's still installing all the necessary dependencies um, which will also be Prisma. Now the reason we're using a TRPC is because it will make it way easier to try this out because it abstracts away the queries into a state which you will see in a second. Uh, so let's create a database model. Let's call it uh, count, and that count will have. Let's enable GitHub Copilot for this. Should just be an ID and a count, and we we don't want a date for that. There we go. Okay, now we can run npx prisma db push to push the changes we've just made in this Prisma file into or my SQL database, not an SQL light one. npx prisma db push push that up to the database and then run npx prisma generate to get everything set up correctly. That worked. Okay. And now we can go to the index. We start our oops, TypeScript server just so we get all the um, type safety. So it's synchronized. Um, and then, okay, we can remove all of this. Now let's get into creating our counter. Uh, first off, let me remove the prettier config. We don't need that. And now let's create our counter and the uh, VS code seems to be lagging. Just a div or actually no, let's have a button instead. Button. And it's really laggy right now. Button. Let's give it a second to load. I think that's normal after initializing a new project. Sometimes it's a bit uh, laggy, but we can just write without any code completion for now. Um, so in here. Let's have the count. And um, well, now it's getting really annoying. And um, for the count, well, let's just give it a second. Um, let's, let's let it load. There we go. Okay, now it loaded. Okay, for the count, we want to create a route. And I think by default it's called, yeah, it's called example. So let's go into the router. And then here we want to create something like, um, it's called increment. It's going to be a public procedure dot mutation because we are not going to be receiving um, any inputs this can just be an arrow function there we go and then here we can say well first off we probably need to fetch the real um, data from the database so let's have the context and then the context has an object called prisma by default because we initialized it um, with the t3 app otherwise we would have have to do that ourselves and now 
we can say something like await prisma dot count and prisma it's not sure it even exists um, dot and let's say find unique we're only just gonna have one count and that is throwing an error expected one argument but got none where and we can actually use github copilot for this um, where id is equal to one okay that sounds reasonable where id is equal to one and then yes we want to make this asynchronous there we go and let's just um, let's just assert that th this is not undefined and now um, Actually, to make this easier for us, we could just say, we can just uh, create this directly in the database. So let's run npx prisma studio. And let's just create a count that is with uh, that has an ID of one. I think that will make it a bit easier. So let's say add record. And then the ID will be one. And then the count will be zero. I'm gonna save that to the database. And there we go. So this will find or, or it should find our count. And now that we've got our count, we are gonna uh, return, let's say const count is equal to that. And then we're gonna return the count. Um, but before we do that, we wanna increment that, right? So, uh, wait, prisma.count.update where id, yes, we wanna increment by one. Very nice. Uh, count is possibly no. Let's just uh, assert that it is not null, uh, which you, sh you shouldn't do in a production app, by the way. And then return the count. There we go. Okay, so now instead of hello, we can say increment dot use mutation. And then we won't need anything passed in here. Um, okay, and now we can mutate the, uh, destructure the mutation, which means just uh, increment. And then we can call that from the button. So on click, whenever we click the button, we want to say um, increment the count by one. And then, interestingly enough, we get the data back. So whatever we return right here, which is going to be the count, we get back right here. And we can uh, just insert that right here. Uh, uh, uh. Okay, which is not necessarily defined. So let's say if there's no data, we're going to return a loading div and now um, count. Oh, yeah, because we want the data dot count. We want the actual number. Okay, there we go. And there is still an error here. We don't care about that right now. And now let's say yarn dev. And I'm really curious as to what will happen. So essentially, um, we have our button. Whenever we click the button, we're calling the back end, which finds the count, updates it, and then returns that back to the front end, which we're showing as data.count. Um, so let's see what happens. Let's go to localhost. It's loading the button. And um, okay, it seems like it's infinitely loading. Mm, count. Let's try that. And VS Code is kind of lagging again. Let's reload the page. Okay, so by default, there is gonna be um, no data, it seems like. So how about we pass an input that is called um, initializing or something along those lines. So um, z dot object, oops, object. That object is gonna have init. init. That's gonna be a Boolean. Um, so false, for example, by default. Or actually, let's say z dot boolean. I think that's cleaner. There we go. And then whenever we are first loading, so with the use effect, we are going to say increment, but we're going to pass the init of true. So we are initializing when this uh, component first loads. And then in here, we're going to say init is false because we are not initializing the component and uh, that will get our button to render and then let's see what happens now so when we click this the back end will get called update the state and then pass that to the front end and only then will the changes be shown and i'm very curious as to how this will work so let's click it interesting 
So that's pretty fast. Now it's very annoying that there's this loading in between because the data will be um, the data will not be defined uh, once we load the route. So we can say is loading maybe and then if there's no data and is loading we are gonna return loading. Let's try that. Oh wait, did I do the and not oops not is loading. So now when we read out the page, the count will still be the same. And it kind of works. That is pretty cool and that is insanely... F I did not expect that. I expected this to take way longer. And there, there are a chain, um, some optimizations you'd have to do for this. But that's very interesting. As you can see, there's a small flicker whenever we click the button. But it's not too bad and the update is really fast. So if I go into the console, you can see the mutations in real time, so uh, I'm trying to point at the monitor, obviously you can't see it, but that's how fast it is. Like, we send it, we get it back. We send it, we get it back. That's really cool. And for example, you could keep the last state in a ref and then update that ref every time the number changes and thereby avoid this little flicker. But, but that's pretty cool. I'm, I'm impressed as to how fast this is. I did not expect this to work that well. Um, anyways. That's, that's just all I wanted to try out in this video. Thank you for the suggestion. It was very cool. Um, uh, yeah, I'm always looking forward to suggestions and trying things out that, uh, you know, I didn't even plan on trying, but things like these are really cool. I really enjoy them. Uh, thank you very much for watching. That was all I wanted to share. I hope you enjoyed as much as I did, and I'll see you in the next video. Have a good one, and bye-bye.